Hello, I'm Stephen Lovegrove, the Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Defence in London. I'm grateful to the UK High Commission in Delhi and Peninsula Studios for the opportunity to talk to you today about uh, British Indian Defence Corporation. And let me start with a striking image. The HMS Queen Elizabeth sailing through the Straits of Malacca, a magnificent new aircraft carrier that has just completed its sea trials. It's the embodiment of the UK's investment in a range of powerful new capabilities, keeping us right on the cutting edge. And she's about to start live flight trials in America with the new stealth fighters, the F-35s. Now, what's that got to do with India? Well, we intend to give you early sight of the ship on her first fully operational tour. That planned voyage in three years' time will symbolise what I see as the three vital features of the modern British-Indian relationship. First, it shows how committed we are to developing our defence ties. Those ties are already strong ones. Now, as we leave the EU, the UK is committed to continuing to play a leading role in the world stage to champion global security, prosperity and the international rule of law. India will be a key partner in all of that as we build on the defence and international security partnership that we signed in 2015. And as we work towards the easier transfer of defence capabilities between our two great nations. Our militaries will continue to take part in joint exercises. The British Army exercised successfully in India on exercise Ajay Warrior last year. The RAF aerobatics team displayed here as part of Eastern Hawk. And our Navy has teamed up for the annual exercise CONCAN while ensuring the maritime security of the Indo-Pacific region, together through the EU NAVFOR Operation Atalanta. Together we're cooperating in the Novasar satellite surveillance programme to identify potential threats. The Joint Shipping Information Exchange Agreement will soon be complete and we're improving our shared hydrographic data. So we're already working together well to tackle sh shared threats, but I'd like us to go further still. After all, the Indian Ocean region might be your backyard, but for us, it's vital and a part of the international network on, upon which we depend. 10% of our imports and exports go through the Gulf of Aden. That's 50 billion pounds of our overseas sales and 80% of our natural gas. Second, it shows our determination to protect and extend our trading lines. The Queen Elizabeth will help safeguard the maritime security of the UK and its allies. Our nations share the dangers and challenges of a new international era. But we also share an historic trade partnership and we now have an unprecedented opportunity to extend and to deepen it. UK investment already plays an important role in supporting the Indian manufacturing and services sectors. The latest Eurostat data showed that there were 271 British companies operating here in 2014, not only turning over nearly £9.5 billion every year, but employing over 300,000 people in India. We can and must build on this when the UK assumes responsibility for its own independent trade policy later next year. Business already believes in bilateral relationships between our two countries. With Vodafone, BP, JCB, Tata, Wipro and Infosys, just a few of the household names that sustain our partnership. January's UK's India Joint Trade Review was the first step at looking on at how our two governments will work together to remove trade barriers across a range of sectors, greatly increasing bilateral trade. And finally, it shows that high tech, the defining feature of Queen Elizabeth and the stealth fighters which she will carry, is at the forefront of our new capabilities. Technology is also at the forefront of the modern, forward-looking and dynamic partnership between our two countries teeming India's massive potential to develop technology with the UK's vital expertise in key areas like cybersecurity, blockchains, robotics and big data analytics. Britain has always been at the cutting edge of technology, but we know that our high-tech sector could not operate without India 
for back office functions, yes, but also for its pool of innovation and expertise. Our joint objective must be to connect companies and research institutions, driving joint innovation and investment opportunities into the future. We're getting there through collaborative programmes on ease of doing business, making it easier for innovative firms to succeed through improved trade facilitation, tax administration and reduced regulation. So the UK and India have stronger trading and investment potential than ever. We will continue to increase our investment in India and across Asia, where Britain's global offer can have a hugely beneficial impact in ensuring that the region's potential is fully realised. In defence in particular, we now have a real opportunity to deepen and extend our cooperation, including capability partnerships on UK, uh, UN peacekeeping, counter-improvised explosive device training, and counter-terrorism. Indian and British troops have already shown us what can, they can do in South Sudan, and I'm personally very proud of what they've achieved. Now, I am fully committed to further strengthening our national security partnership. Because we share core values, we share a willingness to act in defence of the common good, and a sense of the opportunities out there. As our Prime Minister said recently, when a free and open marketplace is combined with the rule of law, individual freedom, equality and human rights in a representative democracy, great things are possible. So it's time for our nations to deepen our partnership and make sure those great possibilities become great realities.